Welcome, my beautiful people, to another episode of Dino Basics, where we dig up the basics on some of our favorite deceased beasts. My name is Logan, and today we'll be looking at the tiny dinosaur that led to big changes. Thank you to Briscoe Schaefer 9578 for today's topic, Sinoceropteryx. Sinoceropteryx was first discovered in 1996 by farmer and fossil hunter Li Yumin. Yumin acquired this first specimen of Sinoceropteryx in the Liaoning province, located in modern-day northern China, bordering that of North Korea. The original fossil consisted of two slabs, which were sold to the National Geological Museum in Beijing, China, as well as the Nanjing Institute of Geology and Paleontology, also located in China. The fossil would then be stored in the museum's archives, where it was accidentally noticed by Beijing Museum Director Ji Jiang, Canadian paleontologist Phil Curry, and Canadian artist Michael Skrepnik while on a fossil tour. This team would name this dinosaur the Sinoceropteryx. Before we continue discussing the history of this fossil, it is important to understand the fossil itself, more specifically, the significance it had in the scientific field. This original fossil was significant as the first non-avian dinosaur fossil to have clear evidence of feathers. This might seem insignificant today, as modern media is much more comfortable in displaying dinosaurs with feathers, and more specifically, the idea of birds being the descendants of dinosaurs. However, in the 1990s, this was not as commonly accepted. Thomas Henry Huxley first proposed that birds were descendants of dinosaurs in the 1860s, but his theories were rejected and seemingly disproven moving into the 20th century. John Ostrom would also propose a similar theory, but his theories were written only 20 years before Sinoceropteryx, and many in the scientific community did not agree with Ostrom's conclusions. Also, while dinosaurs like Arpteopteryx were known to have feathers, it was believed that these feathers were exclusively tied to flight, and that Archaeopteryx was an extremely early bird, not a dinosaur. The discovery of a non-flying, obvious dinosaur with feathers shattered our preconceptions and understanding of avian evolution, as well as adding further validity to the works of John Ostrom. Alright, back to Sinoceropteryx. Chinese authorities initially barred photography of the specimen. However, Curry was able to bring a photo back to the 1996 meeting of the Society of Vertebrae Paleontology. This photograph caused shockwaves in the scientific community, and eventually, an international research team would be given permission to study the fossil, including Ostrom, feather expert Alan Brush, fossil bird expert Larry Martin, and Archaeopteryx expert Peter Wellenhofer. This Sinoceropteryx fossil, with evidence of feathers, is considered the most significant fossil discovery of the 20th century. Yet, Sinoceropteryx also has another honor, as the first dinosaur to have its true colors illustrated. In 2010, a team of scientists from China and the United Kingdom studied the fossil of the ancient bird Confuciornis. The fossil revealed the preservation of melanosomes in its feathers, microscopic structures that contain melanin, a pigment that gives color to feathers and human hair. After the discovery of melanin in the Confuciornis specimen, a similar process was done to check the feathers of Sinoceropteryx. Based on the shape and pattern of the melanin within the fossil, it was concluded that Sinoceropteryx had ginger and white stripes on its tail, becoming the first example of a dinosaur to have its true colors scientifically proven. There is only one species of Sinoceropteryx identified, Sinoceropteryx prima. Its name is not as well broken down into individual Latin words as previous Dinobasic entries, but the name roughly means first Chinese dragon feather, in reference to the fact that this Chinese dinosaur fossil was the first non-avian dinosaur to be discovered with feathers. 
Cynoceropteryx, while sporting feathers, is only distantly related to modern birds and dinosaurs like Arctiopteryx. Instead, Cynoceropteryx belong to a family known as the Compsognathidae. The Compsognathidae are a classification of theropod dinosaurs from the late Jurassic to the early Cretaceous. While this family shares descendants with massive carnivores like the Tyrannosaurus, the Compsognathidae were very small, with the largest members only reaching a few feet in height. Cynoceropteryx itself could reach about four feet in length and a foot tall at the hip. It was estimated to only weigh about a pound, the average weight of a loaf of bread. This might sound too light, but its body proportions explain this unusually small weight. Cynoceropteryx's tail was unusually long compared to other theropods, being more than half of its entire body length. This long tail would keep its body balanced, as well as aiding in sharp turns. It also had a fairly long neck, helping it quickly strike prey and survey its surroundings. Its arms, while relatively short, had comparatively large claws, ideal for holding onto prey. The feathers of Cynoceropteryx were not the fan-like flight feathers seen on modern birds. Instead, they were short filaments, appearing more like down feathers, a more fluffy and soft type of feather seen on newborn chicks. While fossils only had the feathers preserved at certain parts of their bodies, like the arms, neck, back, and sides, it is likely that the feathers of Cynoceropteryx would have fully covered their body and were not preserved due to decomposition. As previously mentioned, Cynoceropteryx was flightless or non-avian, so the feathers more likely would be used to keep the animal warm and for display purposes. The coloration of these fossils consisted of a white as well as a chestnut or reddish brown coloration. It would have had bands of white and brown along its tail, while sporting a brownish back and white stomach. It was also determined that the face would have a raccoon-like bandit mask over its eyes while the rest of its face was white. Cynoceropteryx lived during the early Cretaceous between 130 and 120 million years ago, and most likely would have lived throughout Central Asia, particularly parts of Northern China. During this time, China was filled with temperate lakes and forests, ideal for the hunting style of Cynoceropteryx. Due to its size, long neck, and light weight, Cynoceropteryx would have preyed on small insects and mammals. It was well adapted for fast speeds and high mobility, able to keep up with the literal fast food in its environment. However, due to the brown and white coloration of Cynoceropteryx, it has been suggested that the environment would be more similar to a savanna rather than a forest to make camouflage easier. Cynoceropteryx certainly doesn't fit the bill of a standard dinosaur, but it has still managed to make a few small appearances in media. Documentaries have featured this dinosaur the most, including 2007's Mammals vs. Dinos, 2009's Dinomorphosis, and 2017's Ancient Earth, The Mystery of the Feathered Dragons. Beyond these, Cynoceropteryx also appeared in 2021's Jurassic World Evolution 2 as a DLC dinosaur. Cynoceropteryx may not be as well recognized, but its contributions to our understanding of dinosaurs is undeniable. It has redefined what dinosaurs could look like in the past, as well as what they look like today in the form of birds. Its obscurity really is a shame, but who knows? Maybe its recent appearance in Jurassic World Evolution is only a... Sino... Things to come. That's gonna do it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to leave a comment below what you think of Cynoceropteryx, and if you've heard of this dinosaur before the video. This dinosaur was a bit obscure compared to our other entries, so next week we'll be looking into something a bit more famous. Dilophosaurus. Thank you for your support, and see you in the next video.